Linking the model. In this exercise, we will associate a SPICE model to a schematic component and learn how to properly map the port connections. We will cover the three basic types of models, the primitive element, which requires no external model, the dot model, which is an external dot MDL library that's required, a subcircuit dot SUBCKT, which also requires a dot CKT library. For all three types, when adding the model, the automatic mapping will try to match the pin designators. It's important to verify the port mapping to proper operation of the device model. Let's begin by downloading a set of design files. You'll find these on the eLearn site in the model association section directly below the linking the model, which is the lesson that you're reviewing currently. So the start design files here is what we need. You'll notice there's also a completed design file, so if you want to jump ahead um, and not go through all the steps, you can actually go there. Or if you're having trouble, you can see that what the end result looks like by choosing this one. Right now we're going to start with the start design files. Click on that and you'll see a dialog opens. Uh, indicating the download in process here for the files. Once that's done, uh, simply uh, drop those to your desktop, drag the file like so. Then you can right click on the file and choose extract all, which one will create a default subdirectory of the same name. If you choose that, you'll see we have now a um, folder which contains a number of different files. You'll find that there is a library package over here called Start that we'll be using very shortly. Um, there's an S schematic library file also called Start that is part of that project. And then there's three individual files that are subcircuits. There's an LM324, an AD633, and a 2N2222A. We need to make sure that the extensions for these files are correct. So as an exercise, we're going to change these extensions just to emphasize that you need to have the correct ones in order to use them within Altium Designer. So to start with, the 2N2222A, rename this extension to MDL for model. The LM324, change it to a CKT extension and the AD633 also needs to be a CKT. Now we're going to open up the start library package file. You can try by simply double clicking on that file. If Windows is correctly linked through the Altium Designer application, it will open up as shown here and there will be a single file listed, the start.schematiclib. If you find that it does not open, so I'm going to just close this to uh, illustrate. You can also go to the command File, Open Project, and then browse to your desktop, to that subfolder, the Start Design, and then double click on the Start Library Package. You'll get to the same spot. Now we're going to add those three model files to our project. We do that by right clicking on the project and add Existing to Project menu. And in the dialog that appears, go to the bottom right where we've got the filter and change that to Mix Signal Sim Model File. Once we do that, you've navigated to the desktop and that Start Design Files directory. You'll see the three files that we just edited, the extensions that we edited, are now available. You can select all three of those, click Open, and you'll see in the um, project panel they have now been added to the project. We're going to save all with the command file, save all. We're now going to go to the schematic library, the start.sehlib, by double clicking on it, which will open up in our workspace. And then we want to open up another panel to help us with um, uh, manipulating the elements within the library. We do that by going to the SCH panel button in the bottom right corner, choosing SCH library. And now what we have here. They are the um, three models we selected plus an additional component called resistor. We'll start with the resistor. So click on resistor. In fact, you can double click on it. And what we want to do here is add a simulation model because currently down in the model section there is nothing. So we're going to click on that drop down and choose simulation. Once we do that, you'll see that the simulation dialog appears. We're going to choose the model kind general, 
and the subkind resistor. Now, because this is a generic type, uh, it does not require a model. And we can verify that by clicking on the model file tab below. And you see here the no model required text indicating that all is good. What we want to do for the model name, change that to generic resistor. And do the same thing for the description, also call it generic resistor. Now if we go to the port map tab, you'll notice that there's already a pin mapping, pin 1 to 1, pin 2 to 2, so that is uh, correct. So if we go now to parameters, we can enter in a value, in our case 2.2k is what we need. And now we're going to click on OK to dismiss that dialog. Click OK to dismiss the component properties. Um, and what we can do here is we can move the value, so I can click and drag that text over. And there we go, our resistor is done. And then we're going to save all our files with the command file, save all. We're now going to look at an intrinsic model configuration. We'll do this with the 2N2222A component. And one of the first things you want to do is to display the pin names for this transistor. The easiest way to do that is by going to the actual pins in the workspace, double clicking, opening up the pin properties, and then where it says designator, check the visible box. Click OK. And you see now pin 2 has appeared. Now I don't really like pin 2 so close, so I can make it a little nicer by going in here and looking at the designator position and font. And if I uh, enable the customize, change the value of the margin, say, to 12, that will now move that over a little bit. I'm going to make the other two pins visible by, again, double-clicking on the pin. Under Designator, enable the Visible checkbox. And the same thing for the emitter. There we go. We now have all three pins visible for our component. I can now double click on the 2N2222A to open up the library components properties. And in here down in the bottom right, I'm going to add in the model. In fact, the sub-circuit model that we had um, added. I click on the Add drop-down, choose Simulation. In the Sim Model dialog that appears, I'm going to go to the Browse button and then choose from the libraries available the 2N22A.MDL file. Click OK. And now you'll notice that the parameters have changed. The model type is now transistor. The model name has been added, a full description, as well as the netlist template. I'm going to go to the uh, port map and check the um, pin mapping. And we see here that it is incorrect. The schematic pin 3 is the collector, but on the model it's connecting to pin 3, which is the emitter. So the definitions of the pins are different. Um, within the simulation model and the data sheet. So we're changing that by simply clicking on the model pin and then choosing the appropriate one. Same thing for the last one, change this to emitter, which is in this case is pin 3. Click on OK to dismiss that. OK to dismiss this as well. And we're going to do a save with the file save all command. We're next going to look at adding a sub-circuit model. In this case, it will be the AD633. We're going to go down to the bottom, and there is a model section down here within the component details. Um, and just choose Add Simulation. If that's not visible, choose the drop-down, and you'll find Simulation shown here. And what we're going to choose here um, as the subkind is Spice Sub-Circuit. Click on Browse, and we're going to browse to the AD633 circuit, which should be set at the same directory that we just used. Click OK. And now again, we have the um, model and description populated automatically for us. Now we're going to click on the model file tab at the bottom, and we'll see here listed is the full model information for our device. Now if we click on port map, we'll see here that the port mapping um, is one-to-one uh, -one in terms of the pin numbers. However, this is incorrect. So we need to make some changes, and that's as simple as what we did earlier by simply changing the drop-down in the second column. Using the table that we have in the instructions, you can fill this in. Click OK to dismiss the dialog, and then a file, Save All to save our work. 
The last component we're going to be configuring is the LM324 quad op amp. This is a multi-part, which we can see from the drop-down contains A, B, C, D, the four um, op amps, plus a part E, which contains the power connections. We begin this process by going to Tools, Model Manager. And we're going to choose the LM324 and then Add Simulation. We're going to click on Browse and navigate to the LM324 circuit, similar to what we've done before for the other parts. And then once we do that, you'll see here that uh, model name description has been added, as well as the model subkind of SPICE subcircuit. Now we're going to go to the port map and have a look at those. And we're going to use the table that you can find in the instructions shown here in order to correctly map all the pins. The model pins for minus in, plus in, and out corresponds to 2, 1, and 5 with the ground and VCC 4 and 3. So that's the same regardless of all the subparts. So what we need to do is to map all of the parts to 2, 1, and 5, like so. And repeat that for all four of the quad values. And the final part 5, which is our power, Ground is 4 and VCC is 3. There we go. So now we've completely mapped all the parts for our quad op amp. After we've mapped the ground VCC, be sure to enable the exclude part from simulation checkbox at the bottom here. And then go back to one of the other op, op amps so that there is a um, the correct number of pins detected, um, and then click OK. If you try that with pin part 5 selected and do it, click OK, you'll get this message. The part contains less pins than this type of model requires. Press OK to continue. So just make sure you're on part 4, for example. Click OK, and everything will be fine. Click Close and dismiss this dialog, and a file save 